Hi, welcome to my channel, Lock Booktician, and today we're going to, or I'm going to, cook a couple things and show you some things that uh, my mom really enjoyed to cook and things that she really liked to eat um, in addition to reading a book that in, that's in her favorite genre, which was romance. She was a romance girly, so I'm definitely gonna show you all of that as well, and I hope that you enjoy. Let's get into it. Listen, I put on these headphones, which is in a lot of my videos, and I haven't worn these headphones since before my mama passed away. And, uh, I mean business. I mean business. It's, it's time to get back to reading, so I'm gonna try to find a romance novel that I can read to, like, honor my mom, because she was a romance girly. I am not a romance girly. We'll see where life takes us. So let's see what I can find. I really want to read or finish reading the... I really want to finish reading The Night Sister. But I'm 26% in, so I'll just see. I'm going to make sure it's by a black woman. So maybe this would be my first time reading a Beverly Jenkins. Let's hope that her books aren't a thousand pages long because ain't nobody got time. I'm trying to make this uh, short and sweet, a novella even. All these nine hours, Beverly, Beverly, Beverly! Chill! There's one called Destiny's Embrace. So I'll go ahead and just start with, with Destiny's Embrace and see how that goes. And I'll just check in and let y'all know. I'm about to do some laundry, also get ready to go to the gym. The gym is something that I have to go to for my mental health. And, um, yeah, I'll check in with y'all. That was very anticlimactic because I've been charging the headphones all day. Didn't realize they weren't properly put inside of the headphones and that the headphone cord no longer works. So I had to go ahead and plug it in. So I'm going to just find something to eat. Um, hey, y'all. So I um, was able to make it to Walmart. I just left the gym and I have a Cornish hen cooking. I'll put that on the side while I'm talking. So I pretty much just used well, like what's in the spice packet and what was available. And last time I made um, uh, corned beef, I did the same thing. And the reason why I'm not gonna add any more spice is because this will be added to some cabbage. So um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to listen to um, the book because I couldn't listen to it at the gym. So I'm going to listen to the romance novel that I told y'all about. And then I'm just going to cut up some stuff and, and, you know, get deep into it. So let's go. March 27th, my mom's birthday. Um, I'm gonna season this meat. The um, beef that I, the corned beef that I put in the crock pot is, still has an hour and 59 minutes left. So we'll see how that goes and I have to go and um, do an assessment. So I will see y'all soon. <sighs> Today's is harder than I thought. Um, I thought, you know, I can, I knew today could be hard because it's the, my mom's birthday, 
but um going for work and having to put in different numbers and having to put the date and constantly saying 327 327 327 327 i'm trying not to break down because i can't afford to fall apart in the middle of the work day while i'm seeing people who need services um and seeing people that you know they need services and they deserve to have a counselor who is not losing her shit. Um, although grief happens when it happens, um, there's so many times uh, I almost blurted out like, oh, I'm died or, you know, I, it's, grief is one fucked up thing. It really is. Um, and I've experienced grief before, but never like this. Never like this. So, um, yeah, that's, that's hard. And I hope that I'm able to do another update about the book that I'm reading or listening to. But, yeah, it's hard. So this is the thickness of it. This is how it should look. This is how it should sit. So I'm going to go ahead and pour it into a pan. Let me take the pan out the oven. Um, I'm making um, my mama favorite pound cake that my granny made. seeing clients I'm about to take a little break so that I can start this now we went right ahead last night and we cut up some of the cabbage just to show you what it looks like we're not gonna we always make the fried chicken last but I do want to season some flour in a bag so we'll do that too but we'll just focus and I won't turn this pot on right now I'm gonna turn it on probably in like two hours but and then this is all of that seasoning we made this is green bell pepper this is um, onions and this is also celery so I'm just gonna put some in there I like to put some at the bottom now typically when this is made in my family you put some bacon at the bottom and you cook that bacon and that use that as some of the flavoring for this but I don't um, eat pork like that even though I have recently have had a couple pork rinds I don't want to be judged but um, they are my mom's pork rinds and every time I see it I just want them for some reason but I don't buy pork like food so that is what that is so I got those in there I'm going to put in all of this, every piece of this is going in here. If you look, if you're like, oh my God, what is that sound? That is a dishwasher because you got to clean up as you go. You know what I mean? So again, I'm going to add some more seasoning to this. Trust me, it's just flavor. So I added some more of the Holy Trinity as they call it. So what I've learned when I've made cabbage is that I put too much pepper. So what I'm going to do is do this and season it. But before I season it, I need to check on the, um, the cake. So let's do that. Now that I got this on, let's open and see what we have. Look at that. I think we can take her out. I hope this is not like burnt, burnt that I put on the side. So that's the cake. I typically don't like this bump pan, but it's the only one I have because it seems that I keep losing bump pans. So that's that. Somebody has my other one. I just don't know where they're at. But that is the cake, and let's try to loosen it up so we can take it out. We're gonna put it into this pan, this cake pan here. What I like to do is kind of it's 
kind of move it around a little bit and then just to make sure it looks it just looks a little crusty on the <laughs> just looks a little crusty but I think it's good I think it'll slide right out that's what I'm thinking okay let me listen to it make sure yep it's done for sure so what I usually do is put something on top of it the pan that I want it to sit on I kind of scoot it out just so I can get my finger in the middle of the pot of the bunt pan like so and I flip it over I pat it and then I re I pull it out um, so let's see how we can pull it out because uh, those okay so let's try this okay wow and that's a cake ladies and gentlemen that is the cake I'm so mad about these burnt edges but it's all right it's all right so that's the cake we'll go back to the cabbage right now all right so now we're back over here getting stuff together now i did put a little bit of the tony saturates no salt seasoning on this but i'm not going to add any salt like i said earlier because that corned beef can be salty and i'd rather add salt at the end this is garlic powder This is smoked paprika. This is onion powder. Not too much because I have a lot of onions in there already. And then my new favorite that I'm obsessed with, complete to the bottom. Okay, so we have that. I'm gonna put the lid over it, keep it covered, and then I'll come back on when I'm actually gonna start this. All right, so I'm going to let y'all just kind of get y'all some kind of insight into the book that I'm reading. And the book is called, I think it's Destiny Something by Beverly Jenkins. So this book right here is what I'm reading. Okay, so this book, Destiny Embraces, is about this girl, um, to my knowledge, it's about this girl. When I started reading it, it followed the story of this family, of this woman who was forced to marry this man. And um, while she's marrying this man, and he's not a terrible man that we know of, but she was forced to marry him, and it wasn't the, the first man. The first man, I think there was some issue there. Age being number one. The second man who she was just head over heels with and then was forced to marry, something happened to him tragically and she had to take care of his kids and his um kids that he had another woman and then the kids that she raised with him you're following her talk about the dynamics of her relationship with her children and her stepchildren and as the story progresses you realize it's like she is like hey i want grandchildren or i want this and i want that and she has one child who is just really trying to be free and live his life on the edge. So um, she puts out this ad to get him a house cleaner because his house is terrible, it's disgusting, it smells really bad. And um, we start getting to know the other character. Her name is Mariah, his name is Logan, by the way, the guy who has a dirty house and his mom had to call some people to get things together. So Mariah is a girl who has a very, um, just a very unique thing about her, which is her eyes. And she is a really talented seamstress. And her mom is very, very abusive to her, very physically and verbally abusive. So you go through her childhood and how her mother treated her to her being an adult and how her mother is treating her. So a, a series of circumstances happened and then she ended up with her aunt 
who then um, answered the ad to be a cleaning person for the first person I talked about, which his name was Logan. So now I'm at the point of the story where she is like, look, I'm gonna let him know how I feel because no one's gonna make me feel small and talk to me reckless like my mom did. And he's like, who is this girl talking to me like this? Do she not know she's beneath me kind of thing? So this is set in the 19th century and it is very interesting hearing all the like antiquated um, words and just thoughts that were used at the time and that could be kind of triggering so I want you to be aware of those things. But so far I am liking the pace of the story and I'm liking that the romance isn't there yet but I'm only close to 30% in and I know the romance is going to come and I'm just going to want to vomit but I'm doing this for you ma big ups so that's what I'm doing right now but um I'll continue working on some stuff that I have to do I'm also like cooking for my mom so we'll just do that all right y'all so this is the corned beef tastes really good um now I just put the strips of it in here and the hard thing about this is that I'm tasting it I don't like mushy carrots, so I'm pouring a little bit of the the juice from that the corned beef was sticking in, and that's adding some really good flavor, but we need to season it some more. I didn't show y'all, but I did make these um, cornbread muffins, so I got them in the oven for 20 minutes, and let's see how they go. What we have here is powdered sugar and we also have sweet condensed milk. And we're going to open the can so that we can get some of the liquid out from outside of the can. Inside the can, y'all know what I mean. You need a whisk for this next step and you might need a spoon because condensed milk is very thick. You can use evaporated milk too, I've used that. Um, so, I'm just going to go ahead and try to mix this together. Alright, I'm going to add something just to unthicken it. Because every time I use sweet condensed milk, i got to add a little bit of milk to thin it out. All right. So as you can see, it's starting to get that type of consistency. And that is what you want when you put it on the cake. Now I can tell just by looking at it that that will not be enough icing. So add some, so, oop. That was a lot, but that's okay gonna add a little bit more here don't be shy out there y'all don't be shy don't ask me for no measurements because I'm letting the ancestors use me I don't know nothing about no, no measurements all right get the whisk going it does feel it feels a tad too thick a tad a tad See there, it's a little milk. Tad too thick. That ain't me blowing my nose. That's Kayla in the background for everyone watching. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. All right. So I'll put this in a container later, but I'll move it to the side. Get yourself a spatula. Get yourself a spatula, bring the cake to you. This is the cake. See if I can back it up so you can get the full cake. And now what we're going to do is just like get it on there so that it spreads all around. This is very difficult to do when the cake is hot. So please make sure your cake is fully cooled down. You can do that too. Make things just go a little quicker. If you're like fighting for time like I am right now. Fighting. 
fighting for time. Yeah, and I just like to, when his friends go down there, I just go ahead and humble them and bring them back up. That's all. Bring some friends on the other side. Okay, see I'm going around and bringing it back to the cake. Now if the cake was hot, you would not be able to do that. I'm talking about icing every goddamn where. And just like so like that, that's the icing on the cake. I ain't gonna put too much icing because I'm not big on a lot of icing. So that's enough for me. So we're gonna just close it. And that's that. All right, y'all, let's get ready or make some room for that chicken, okay? So I seasoned the flour with all the seasonings you see me put on the chicken. The flour is seasoned. Now this chicken has been marinating. What time is it? It's 6.33 right now. This chicken been marinating for like six hours. So that's good. So, I don't want to touch the chicken today. That can't be my ministry. It just can't be today. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to put a couple pieces in this flour. And then I'm going to shake it. And then I'm going to fry it. So you'll see me frying it in the next clip. Alright, so this is the end result of the chicken. Fried. Now look, I didn't say they were lookers. But these two, they look good. The rest of them, I overfilled. Um, mind your business. I could have, I could have done better. But here we are. You know what I mean? So I am fifty something percent through with the book that I am reading in honor of my mom. <laughs> and it had to be a smut, but because that's what she likes. So yeah, I'm forty nine percent in, fifty one. Sorry. 51% in and I'm at a part where the dynamic of Logan and Maria is starting or Mariah is starting to change. They're starting to look at each other a little differently other than like employer and employee and we're starting to see how they're starting to feel for each other which I think is really good stuff is starting to pick up. There's like moments of like just pure spiciness if that's the word and um i'm liking it so far i i'm sad to say that it's hard for me to read romance so right now my rating is a certain number in my mind and if depending on how the story panned out it can be above or lower but um i'm just like thinking while i'm reading this book like this has i to me, it's no surprise that my mama loves smut because she was a woman who had a very healthy appetite for sex. So it 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 this this is not a surprise for me. So, but it's also like just so weird to be reading it because it's like I was meant to pick this book because some of the character names so happen to be unique names of people who I love in my life. And then there are certain dy dynamics in the book that reminds me of me and my mom. It's so weird. So that's kind of where I'm at. But um, I'm going to continue reading and checking in with y'all. Maybe at the 75% mark. And then when I'm done with the book. So wish me luck. This doesn't mean anything. But the background of this shot is giving. It's the plant it's everything it's giving like don't zoom into me blur me out check out the back you see that skull it's living its life do you hear me look at that skull look at the golden girls looking dead you hear me dead to the world dead as a donut just sitting there oh i just i just love it for me i do This man said, open your mouth and let me taste you. 
that's that's the clip I got nothing else to add let me go and check some okay so I went ahead and I finished um, the book and I didn't realize it's in a series so I started book two that has nothing to do with this video but um I like that book I think I'm gonna give it four stars um because I just think that the character development was really good and I'm thinking um I can learn to enjoy romance where if the character development is really good um, so I really liked that book. Um, I think it would have been a book that my mom liked because the spicy scenes were spicying. And, um, yeah, I think it was overall not a bad book at all. Beverly, you know, you that girl, and that's just what it is. Um, I did like the happy, the happy ever after. Is that what we're going to call it? Yep, the happy ever after. <laughs> I did like that. Um, and the epilogue was just the cutest thing ever. So I think, yeah, it's four stars for me. Um, so thank you for watching this video of me um, cooking a meal and reading a book that um, reminds me of my mom or a book in my mom's favorite genre, I would say, the most. Um, so, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.